Yeah, the, the, the Bible is written in, in a particular language. And, and, you know, it has to be discerned by revelation. God reveals truths. And, and those shepherds, they would have had a, a revelation and they would have seen that this, little, this baby now is as actually a, a sacrificial lamb. That's what John said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so whenever God speaks, and when, this Bible has written its mysteries. It's, it, there's a mystery in here that, that's got to be unraveled. It's got to be, got to be sought after you. You've got to seek it. You've got to, you've got to go for it. You've got to ask God to help us, bring us revelation and understanding. We just don't want words that are going to come into our ears and something that might sound good. I, I would love to be able to have the elocution and the, and the velvet voice and, the, and to, to be able to articulate words and, and, you know, just say it so nicely and everything like that so as it just flows. But, friend, I want to tell you it's more than that. It's got to be a revelation. It's got to come with an understanding. And we, the church, we can, we can have a form of godliness but deny the power of it have no power. We can be, be a bunch of people that claim to be the church, but not functioning as the church needs to function, not being the church. And if ever there's a time, I believe in the history of humanity, when the church needs to rise up and be the church, the church that God wants, the church that Jesus wants, full of the Holy Ghost, full of power, full of the anointing, the prophetic utterance flowing, the, the word of God going forth with power and with authority, where the anointing would break through and smash, where God's word would be like a hammer that would break through. Strongholds would be broken. People would be released, where we find the anointing that would set captives free, chains being broken, lives being restored. I believe that the church needs a move of the Spirit that will bring restoration to it. We need a, a, a revival fire that will burn on the inside of us. It will cause us to see God again in all His glory. To see Jesus high and lifted up. I, I love that word that, that I, I can't remember it, nor can Sharon the, who brought it, but that, that there's no force on earth that can stop the church. And yet the church lingers and like a, a lump of limp lettuce leaf. She's going, that girl. <laughs> oh, here we go. Chuck up, wonder. Yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah, man, that's all right. Amen. Yeah, don't worry, Mum. It's, it's, you're not going to. Yeah, amen. Praise God. <laughs> We're going out with a bang. <laughs> Oh, praise Jesus. What an amazing God. So, but I really believe that, that you know, the church, we've, we've, we've got to stand up again. We've got to allow that anointing to touch our life. And, and you know, there's an old saying that we used to say, we, we, you've got to get under the spout where the glory comes out. And, and you know, that's, it's not just a matter of coming to church. It's not a matter of just that you've got to get under the spout. You take yourself under the spout. You can run around the shower and not get wet. <laughs> you can come to church and not be touched. But we get under the spout where the glory comes out and let the presence of God come down and touch us in an amazing way. Go, oh, Rashaka Bundi. As a matter of fact, I can get it now. <laughs> See, what happens when God's Spirit invades the hearts of men and women? When God's Spirit can invade the hearts of men and women. When God... God can penetrate and touch us on the inside where, where, where our hands would automatically just go up and worship and praise, where our hearts would be opened in, in such a magnitude that all we want to do is worship Him, where the things of this world would grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace, where things of this world no longer are the things that are really important but more important is that we would know God and that God would know us, that God's hand could come upon us. What happens when the Spirit of God invades the hearts of men and women, His church? 
I believe that when God's, when God's purpose comes in like that, when he, when he invades our hearts, all of a sudden vision will, will just, just burst out of us. Dreams will, will just flow out of our lives. Purpose. We know what we're here for. When we're not here just to fill up a pew. We're not here just to, to, to listen to some, some old fella have a mag. <laughs> We're here for God, amen. We're here to be touched by God. We're here to be motivated and activated and touched in, a, in an amazing supernatural way. And I believe that that's what God wants to do in His church today. We won't change the world till the church changes and allow the Spirit of God to penetrate our fleshly hearts. God's Word promises us reconciliation God wants to restore he wants to bring back certain things I want you to have a look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 It says here, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, if anyone, if anyone, is there an anyone here? Is there an anyone here? You see, what happens is when God speaks, and when God says, I want to heal you, I want to touch you, I want to bless you, I want to restore, I want to do this, usually we are here and we think, well, that's for him or that's for her, that's for somebody else, but not me because of all my problems and all this and so forth. It says, if anyone, if anyone, and if you're in anyone here, guess what? You are a candidate for what God wants to do in your life what God wants to do in this world. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if you're born again, if you love Jesus, I want to tell you, you are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You believe that? God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. What an amazing thing. If anyone, if there's anyone here right now, that, that if we're in Christ, we are new creations. All things are passed away. I believe God wants to do more than you and I could ever imagine in our life. If only we can just get ourselves under the spout where the glory comes out. If we can just get ourselves away from the deceiver. The devil is a deceiver. The devil will lie to you. He will try to tell you you are not a candidate. He will try to tell you that you are not worthy. He will try to tell you that blah, 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 whatever he is trying to tell you. But he is a liar. He is a deceiver. I believe that God wants to do certain things in our life. The first, I, I believe that God, through Jesus Christ, wants to reconcile us back to himself, the work of the cross. Jesus Christ has cleaned the slate for us. He wants to reconcile us back to himself. Something happened at the fall of humanity. Something happened that separated man from God. And we know the, the work of the cross. We know that the uh, curtain was rent. We know the suffering of Jesus. We know that he rose again, triumphant o'er his foes. We know he wears the victor's crown. The church, we really should be that group of people that no weapon formed against us can prosper. We should be the people walking in power and authority. We, Jesus said, these things that I do, you can do also. And if we started to stand in our place, in the position that God has given to us, 
Even in a boat, when there was a storm and when there was wind, Jesus spoke to those things. He said to the wind, be still. And He spoke to the sea and He said, be calm. And friend, if you and I understand that, that we can walk in that authority. God is doing a work in the church. He's bringing us back to something so dynamic and so powerful, so amazing. If we just allowed Him to do it, if somehow or other we could get our self-consciousness, our mindsets out of the way and started to understand that this Word is written for you and for me, for the any, everybody's, for the anybody's. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. First, God through Christ wants to reconcile us back to himself. The work of the cross. Jesus cleaned the slate for us. Isn't that an amazing thing? Clean the slate. I don't know if you were old enough here today to have used a slate when you were at school. <laughs> in Christ, we are new creations. I believe, secondly, God, through Christ, has restored to you, to the anybody's, all that the devil has stolen. Anybody had anything stolen? Come on. It's all right to tell the truth and shame the devil. God, I believe, through Christ, not through global connections, not through the AOG, DOG, COC, NED, but through Him. Coming to church is not the whole answer. It can help you, but coming to Christ is the answer. Coming to Christ is the answer. We could be bold enough we should call ourselves Church Christ. <laughs> Come to Christ, don't come to church. <laughs> but that's silly, I know. In Joel 2, verse 25, it says, And I will restore to you the anyone's. I'll restore to you. You've got to put yourself in that picture. And I will restore to you the anyone's. The any ones. I want to restore to you. Why does he want to restore to us? If you read on a little bit, it says, and then you will know, in verse 27, that I am in the midst of you. I don't know this morning if you could sense or even a little touch as we were singing and as we were worshipping God in our midst. See, we just don't feel nothing. No, you won't. But you've got to get yourself under the spout where the glory comes out. You take yourself into a place where you lift up those hands that hang down, where, where you let the presence of God come on you, where you let God... I believe one of the many things God, through Jesus Christ, is restoring is our confidence. Is our confidence, our belief system, our ability to believe. You know, one of the major problems, I believe, is, is our lack of ability to be able to believe what God says about us. God says you're more than a conqueror, but we don't act like that or we don't believe that. The ability to believe, the, bi the ability to have faith, like our computers, which I don't know anything about and it's obvious in the next couple of statements that I make. <laughs> but like computers, they've got to be reprogrammed. Am I on the right page so far? <laughs> So they give out the right information. So we can get that right information. I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but I'm going to say something to make a point. How many of us know that we need to be able to think right? 
You know, one of the, as a man, the way a man thinks in his heart, so he is. See, if you think wrong, everything goes wrong. If we're thinking wrong, if we're thinking everybody's against us, guess what? We're thinking wrong. And you've got to have your mindsets changed. And I, I want to say this again. I'm not being disrespectful, but how many would like or need to go to the Holy Ghost geek? Is that what you call them? Is it a computer geek? Are you, you got me now? Here we go. Here we go. Okay. I'll, okay. See, I told you after you would realize I know nothing about this. How many people would <laughs> need to go to the Holy Ghost geek? You with me? And get Holy Ghost reprogrammed. You won't forget that one, will you? <laughs> The day Neil made a fool of himself again. <laughs> I believe another thing that God wants to do, restore to us, is joy. Joy. Psalm 51.10, it says this, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation which becomes mine. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, that now becomes mine. And I will teach transgressors their way, your way rather. Can I say something? Don't be miserable. Don't have the baptism of lemon juice. Miserable. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Then I will teach transgressors your way. Nehemiah 8.10 says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, it's a good verse for around Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> Drink the sweet and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Anybody need a dose of joy? Come on, why don't you lift up your hand? I believe another thing that we really need to have restored outside of our joy. And you know, in 93, we had a move of the Spirit where there was just joy flowing like a river, where people just got touched. The anointing just came down in such a special way. Friend, everything that I'm talking about today is in the realm of the Spirit. And everything that I'm talking about today if you want to, you can act it out in the natural. But God, I believe, wants us to come into the realm of the Spirit, where the Spirit of life, where the Spirit of joy, where the Spirit of love comes upon us. In Revelation 2.1, it says, You have left your first love. It's so easy, friends. It's so easy in the modern church. It's so easy in the modern church to come to church and really not experience the presence of God. Not experience the love of God. It's easy to go to a prayer meeting and not experience the presence of God. Sometimes we get so busy so caught up with the program, not wanting to, not deliberately going that way, but we drift off course and forget the things that are really important. What really is important to you today? What's really important? That's the, really the question. What's really important? 
our love for our Lord and Saviour, and our love for one another. God wants to restore the joy of our salvation. I believe that the enemy wants to bring the world system into the church. It's not God's ability anymore, but it's man's ability. M mindsets. The Bible says this, They that come to God must believe that He is God, and that He is a rewarder, not a withholder. What I'm speaking about today, I believe, as we move out of this time or this season of 18, and a lot of people would say, well, it was a great year. And some people would say it wasn't so great. But nevertheless, it's come and it's gone. And now we're heading into another era. And I suppose what is on my heart really is that we have to be people of the Spirit. Zechariah said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And so we, the church, as we get caught up in church, church life, trying to make church presentable, trying to attract people, trying to do things that won't offend and goodness knows what else, we sort of move away a little bit from the things of the Spirit. And so it becomes natural. It becomes natural. Natural. And so we have this form of godliness, but no power. We have church, but is this really what God wants? This is not what God wants, even what we've got here this morning. This is, how many people know God wants more than this? Come on, is that true? Is it okay if I talk like this? Because 2018 is all over. I say, oh, that was last year. <laughs> we have to be people of the Spirit. And Jesus knows that more than anybody else. And in, because the way he trained his disciples, he, he moved supernaturally. He showed them things. He said, go catch a fish and open his mouth, and when you open his mouth, there'll be gold in there. And, and, he, and he moved in the Spirit, and he, and he raised the dead, and he did things there that boggled their minds. When he stilled the, the, the waters and the wind, the, the disciples all looked at each other and said, what manner of man is this? Who is this amongst us that even the wind and the sea obey him? But he made this statement which boggles my mind. He said, these things that I do, you can do also. But we drift away because we don't think that we're the anyone. We think it was just for the disciples for them to do that. But no, for anyone, anyone who can believe these things are all possible. And Jesus trained his disciples. And he spoke about the things of the Spirit. But he demonstrated it. Jesus demonstrated most surely more than he spoke things. Because you see, the things of the Spirit are caught. You catch the Spirit. I pray today that there are things that have been said whether it be the songs, the communion, the song that was sung after, or the prophetic, or whatever, but there'd be something there that would connect itself with you. That you take something. And in Matthew chapter 16, and it says, Then Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi. He's asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And he could understand that these guys had, had religion in them. They saw a blind person once and they said to Jesus, Who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus said, Neither. 
And he could understand that that had enough natural stuff going on in their mind that he had to break that stronghold down. And I believe that's where God has got us now. He's breaking down mindsets, wrong thinking. In our structure, everything that we do in church has got to be smashed. We talk about demons being chained. I want to tell you the church needs to be loosed from its chains. Oh. We need to be loosed from chains. Chains of religion. Who do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And they all had their opinions. But you see, then Jesus had to challenge it. And when you're under the unction, when you're in the presence of God, your mindsets start to break. Your mindsets start to, to take second place. And you find yourself saying things that you never ever thought. Or you find yourself thinking things or, or even believing something that you thought was impossible. How many people want to go to that place? See, you don't go there by just being church. You go there by getting hold of the Spirit. The Spirit takes us in, amen. The Spirit is the way in. The Spirit of God will take you in. But who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do we say that He is today? He's my healer. He's my this. No, He's more than all of that. He's all of those combined. Jesus answered us, sorry, and He said, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. See, those were, we, we say that in church now, but I want to tell you that wasn't a phrase that was used very often in those days. That was a revelation. That was, you know, it was, it was just something that smashed through all the concepts of, of human thinking. And God's got to smash through the concepts of human thinking in the church. You are, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. And then Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. It's not what popular opinion is. It's not what the church might be doing right now. And friend, what we've got to be careful of is that we just don't become part of the club. We just don't become part of what everybody else is doing. And sometimes we look and we see, oh, they're, they're, they're growing and they're doing this and they're doing that. And, oh, what are they doing? How are they doing that? What are they doing? What aren't they doing? And so you start to try to, in your own mind, articulate some sort of a program that, that will be acceptable that will help people. And in that we lose the power of God. We lose the anointing. We lose the whole purpose. It's got to be by the Spirit. He said, blessed are you. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. This isn't what the church down the road is saying. This isn't what they're saying over there. And I'm not knocking churches. Please I don't, don't misunderstand me. I don't want to be moved by other churches. I want to be moved by the Holy Ghost. We must be moved by the Holy Ghost. We don't need to go to a seminary, seminary or cemetery <laughs> to teach you how to grow a big church. You need to go to Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I'm digging a hole for myself here. But my Father, who is in heaven... He has revealed this to you. Oh, my friend, I'm longing for the day when people come and say, Neil, 
Oh, Neil, I was washing the dishes and I lifted my heart to God and God began to speak to me and God started to share this and download this to me and ara shakabundi, amen. Don't be miserable, Christian. <laughs> be happy. <laughs> Smile at me, will you please? <laughs> you put a sign up there, smile, <laughs> something like that. Just help me out here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. <laughs> See, we're getting like the church. <laughs> oh, God. You see. Flesh and blood is not revealed, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, the first Pope. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not in my Bible. <laughs> that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hate will not prevail against it. Some people believe that, that God was going to build the church on Peter. But really, that word is not the word that we think it is. It means pebble. He said, Peter, you're a pebble. But what I want to build my church on is the revelation that the whosoever, the anybody, the pebble received. God wants to build his church on revelation. Understanding, I will build my church. It says there, it says, and you are Peter. But on this rock of revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. You see, when we get a revelation, when we get an understanding, when we realize who this God is, when we get under the spout where the glory comes out, when we're not going to just live by words, when we're not just going to live by, by whatever people want to say. We are all affected from time to time on what people say. But I want to tell you, friends, what has to motivate us is what the Word of God says. Do you believe that today? This book is God's Word. It contains life. It, it will speak to us if we go to it, if we, if we allow it to get around our lives. You see, I, I just, if I, can I have another five or ten minutes? I want you to have a look at Romans with me. just want to explain something that, I, that, that has been a blessing to me. Romans chapter 4. Revelation, we, we, we have to understand God speaks by His Spirit. He said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will teach you. He will reveal truth to you. He is the revealer. I believe that this book is God's Word to you and me, to the anybody's. It contains life. The Bible can be a book that's just read as a book. No life. Logos. But God wants it to be rhema. He wants it to be life. You see, in Romans uh, chapter 4, 17, there's a story here that we all know so well. And it says here, uh, it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him. Abraham and Sarah had a promise given to them, some say 13 or 17 years before they actually got the promise. And for a period of time, the promise was just logos. It was just words. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And so they heard the word. But what happened is now they try to work out how they're going to fulfill the promise of God. 
And this is what I've been saying all morning, I suppose, is that if we, the church, try to work out how to fulfill the promise of God, we're going to get an Ishmael. But it's natural. It's natural to think that way. Because we're natural, and we will think that way. That's where you've got to stop yourself from thinking that way. And you've got to allow the Spirit of God. But for many, many years, it was just, it was just words. How is this going to happen? It's getting, we're getting older. It can never happen. It won't happen. So for a period of time, God's promise to Abraham and Sarah were just words. What changed things was that God took them to a place. And again, can I say this? I, I, I pray, I pray, God, that you help me. If we're just standing, waiting for God, it won't happen. But if something on the inside of us aches for God, can you catch what I'm saying here? Come on, give me a break. If there's something on the inside that, that, that's longing for God, and when the song serves us on, we're, we're in there, we've got our hearts open, wanting God, God can take us to a place. Can you catch my drift here? God can take you to a place where you can hear Him. God can take you to a place. But if you're out there trying to work out how you're going to do it, He can't take you to the place. And he takes you there. And as He takes you there in the realm of the Spirit, and He starts to speak to you, and He starts to open your eyes and open up your heart and open up your mind, and He says, Abraham, He said, look at the stars in heaven. Look at the sand and the seashore. Look, so shall your descendants be. And all of a sudden, he has a revelation knowledge that began to change things. And that's what's going to have to happen to the church in 2019. Something has to happen. There has to come a shift. There has to come a shift where the hearts of men and women are turned back to God. Where we're not coming to church, but we're coming to Christ. We're coming to lift up our voices in praise and adoration. We're coming to worship the King in all His glory and all His majesty. Where at times we will fall on our faces. Times where tears will roll down our cheeks. Times where of refreshing. Times of refreshing. How many people need a refreshing? Pray my God help me today. That caused Abraham, when after this something happened, his belief system, system, system changed. Instead of trying to work things out and getting an Ishmael, he believed God and got an Isaac. As it is written, friend, I want to tell you there's nothing that I want to bring into this church that isn't written. I'm not trying to say, let's have a revelation. Oh, if we do this or do that, or, or God will give us the lotto numbers, or this or that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that we get a revelation of what's in this book. We get a revelation of this, amen? Not man's ideas. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Man, that's an amazing statement. Who contrary to hope and hope believed so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, 
so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith. Friend, you get a revelation, it'll cause your faith level to rise. It'll cause all those things to rise. He did not consider his own body already dead since it was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, the things of this world didn't really matter. It didn't matter this or that. It didn't matter whether this was right or that was right. It didn't matter. What really mattered is what God said. He didn't look at the circumstances. He didn't look at the situation. He didn't look at what was going on in the natural. He looked at what God said. And God spoke and He spoke the amazing words. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what God has promised, He was also able to perform. Friend, are you convinced today that what God has promised in this book, He's able to perform? A lot of pages. There's 66 books, and they're all truth. All true. And therefore it was accounted to the whosoevers who believed. It was not written for his sake alone, but it was imputed to him. But also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe. Father, help us. Help us, 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 help us. I believe that God wants to reconcile us back to the early church. The early church. Help us, Father. Father, as we just hear today and we're starting just to move out of 2018 into 2019. Father, I, I just pray that a refreshing wind would blow over us all. A refreshing wind of your Spirit would just touch us. A refreshing wind would blow. Fresh breeze would just come in. Touch us, Father. Touch us. Touch us. We're not going to have an altar today. Just let God touch your life today. It's not by mind, it's not by power, it's by my spirit. Spirit. Spirit life. Spirit life. He's done everything that he can do. Help us, my God, as we just leave this 2018 behind and enter into a whole new day. Let's just be a day of breakthrough, a day of revelation, a day of joy, in Jesus' name.